we usually learn that science works like this. You start with a question or a hypothesis you want to explore, do experiments to test those ideas, and then form your conclusions based on the results. The experiment leads to the discovery. But what if the experiment you need to answer your question doesn't exist yet? Very often, scientists need to discover how to do an experiment before they can use it to make more discoveries. Today, we're meeting scientists who just invented a new experiment that is gonna rock the world of plant biology and lead to tons of amazing new discoveries. It all starts with this humble little weed. Meet Plantago. This weed grows everywhere, and that's partly why it's so interesting to scientists at Purdue University. All species of Plantago respond really well to stress, so that's why we're interested in using it as a model species to study how plants respond to stress. We hope to take what we've learned from Plantago and apply it to other crop species so we can make them more resistant to stresses like drought or even salty soil. Plantago is also great for vasculature research. The vasculature or the veins transport water, nutrients, and signaling molecules. So it's like a combination of the nervous system and the circulatory system in animals. So it's really important that we understand this on a fundamental level so we can apply it to crop improvement. But what makes a plant bad or good for studying the vascular system? We're gonna show you. Turns out when you try to get veins out of most plant leaves, they just break in half, leading to some very sad scientists. But when you break a plantago leaf, the veins pop right out, so they're super easy to extract for research. But in order to really understand all these amazing features of plantago, we really need to understand what's happening at the genetic level. To do this, we need to design an experiment that allows us to actually change the genes in Plantago. This experiment is called genetic transformation. It allows scientists to turn genes on and off, which really helps us figure out the genes function. I really wanted to discover how to do genetic transformation in Plantago. Genetic transformation isn't a brand new experiment. We're already able to do it in some species like tomato and corn, but every time you want to do it in a new type of plant, you're basically starting from scratch because each species has its own chemical and physical quirks. So Hannah has spent a huge chunk of her PhD figuring out how to transform Plantago, and I am so excited to see how it's done. Shall we? Yes. These are the plantlets that we'll be transforming. They've been growing in sterile conditions for about a month now, from seed until they get about this size. But in order to do the transformation experiment, we first have to introduce you to a new organism, Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Agrobacterium is able to genetically transform plants and it evolved this skill naturally. So it's been doing it for way longer than us humans have even been doing science. Normally, it inserts its own genes into the plant's DNA, which tell the plant, hey, fill me a huge house and fill it with a ton of delicious food. But scientists can swap out the house and food genes for ones that they actually want to study. And the agrobacteria will insert those genes into the plant instead. This is really cool. I think we often picture gene transformation as this really like artificial thing, but we're actually borrowing it from nature. So uh, what genes have you given the agrobacteria? I'm actually studying a transporter that moves sugar from the leaves into the veins of the plantago plant. To really understand how it works, I want to turn it off and then see what happens to the plant. To do this, I actually put the genes that will turn off the sugar transporter into the agrobacteria. So now it's time for the actual transformation. I put the agrobacteria into this liquid. That's why it's so cloudy. And we have to help the agrobacteria get into the plant. Right, this is where all of the troubleshooting and development, specifically for Plantago, really comes into play. First, we did a series of experiments to try to find out what type of tissue is best for the agrobacteria to enter. We tried it on roots and stems and leaves, found out that in the end, only the roots were able to get the agrobacterium into them. So the first thing we need to do is actually cut the roots off the plant. And to do that, pick it up right here. Oh, look at the root! Take the scissors and you wanna cut right between the root and shoot junction. Make sure it goes directly into the water. I'm placing them into the water because it keeps the roots hydrated. Now it's your turn. <laughs> okay, gonna get some Plantago a haircut. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was extremely satisfying pulling yeah. it out of the gel. Can we just talk about that for a minute? <gasps> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do I get a gold star? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the next step is to actually put them into the agrobacteria. I'm so ready. Yeah, so I'm gonna open the agro. Does not smell good, just FYI. Mm-mm, nope, nope. You're just gonna drop it in here, and then we're gonna cut it up into small pieces. Kinda like that. 
chop chop. Once they're cut into smaller pieces, I'll just very lightly make thin slices on here. Oh, you're yeah. kind of like scoring them almost. Yeah. Okay, wow. Because naturally it enters plants through wounds. So I'm okay. trying to mimic that in oh, the lab. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. Farming from nature yet again. Yes, mm -hmm. always. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> my first plantago root chop. Please critique my uh, technique. <laughs> Doing it perfectly. Uh, that's what I love to hear. Okay, I'm gonna try scoring them now. Yeah, go ahead. Just like, do, 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 yep. do, do, do. like everything else have a sound effect. Okay, yeah. should I do it? Or yeah. Do All right. The next step that we need to do is take the roots out of the agrobacteria and blot them on the paper because there's lots and lots of little agrobacteria in there and we only want the ones that are in the process of transforming the roots to stay in the roots. And then your next step is you're gonna put it on to a media where it'll allow the agrobacterium to transform the plant for a few days. Very nicely patting it down so all surfaces of the root are coming into contact with the media. Okay, so he's gonna blot and make sure the shininess goes away. I'm pressing it in. Yep. This is really calming. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my favorite thing in the world is to sit here with the podcast uh, on and just chill. Dreamy. And there we go. We did it! Did it! So at this point, the agrobacteria is in the roots. It's working super hard to insert the sugar transporter shutoff genes into the plant's DNA. But how do we help this pile of chopped up roots remember how to be a plant again? We actually use hormones. We add hormones that tell the roots to grow into stems and leaves. And then we introduce it to another type of hormone that tells it to grow into roots again. And these are the exact type of hormones you'd use to propagate your houseplant cuttings. The ability to regenerate a whole plant from a little bit of root or shoot has nothing to to do with the genetic transformation we just did, almost all plants in nature have this ability. This is a plant that has regenerated after transformation. You can kind of see that many of its leaf tissues are kind of like sad and brown, and you can really see this when comparing it to a wild type plant where the leaves are happy and green. One of the reasons that this plant looks like this is because the sugar transporter can't get the sugar from some of the younger leaves into the older leaves. So the plantago transformation was successful. Yeah, I mean, obviously we can see what's happening with our eyes, but scientifically we have to run more tests to confirm what's happening at the genetic level. My work still isn't finished. I still have a few more tests to do to really confirm exactly what the transporter is doing. And this transformation is stable, right? Like this plant will be able to pass down its shut off sugar transporter to the next generation. So you don't have to do the experiment over and over again every time you want a new plant. Correct. This protocol has been published. So any scientist with any gene that they're interested in can actually use it for their own studies on Plantago. So is that it? Are your plant transformation invention days done now that you've got a solid protocol published? Nope. That was Plantago Lanterolata. Next. I want to transform Plantago Major. In order to really unlock the scientific potential of Plantago, we want to do comparisons across multiple species. For example, Plantago Major has flowers with fully functional male and female parts. Plantago lanceolata makes flowers that are normal and also flowers where the male reproductive organs are sterile. Male sterility is important to understand for both plant bleeding and seed production purposes. But we can't study it until we're able to do genetic transformation in both species. Wait, so you have to develop a whole new experiment even for closely related species? Wow, well, I'm gonna have to come back and see how that one works. Thanks so much for having us. A link to Hannah's paper is in the description if you want to transform Plantago lanceolata for yourself. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and many thanks to the National Science Foundation for funding this episode.